Hello and welcome to this fibro section. I haven't done one of these in ages. Um, really, because I've had other things to film. But I thought I've had a lot of new uh, subscribers lately. So I wanted to update you all and also go over my fibro story because I did film it a long time ago at the old house and I said to someone oh it's on there because they asked how I got fibromyalgia how I was diagnosed and everything and then when I went to check it's gone I know I lost a few videos once by when I first started out I mistakenly deleted like maybe I did that but I didn't think that was one of them but anyway I'll record it again it's not an issue and if you have watched my fibromyalgia story before I do apologize if you're just hearing a repeat <laughs> but I just thought it's important to put it on there because you know people want to know and I want to share it with you you know so for those of you that are new you know and those of you that aren't you know that my name's Nicola um, I live in Essex and I have a husband called Mark I have two daughters Holly who is nearly 21 and Poppy who is 18 they both live at home um, and yeah we had to move um, we had a lovely four bedroomed house which was beautiful and we bought that Mark and I bought that when we were 18 so we are actually 45 now because someone asked that the other day so me and Mark are both 45 um, he's two and a half months, no, two months exactly younger than me. So he's my toy boy, I always say. <laughs> but um, yeah, we, we lived in a beautiful four bedroom house that we'd extended and renovated and spent so much time and money on. And we were so happy there. But then I got ill, uh, money situations arrived because I couldn't work. So we decided to downsize and move to a bungalow because I was really struggling with the stairs. My ankles give way quite a lot in pain and I was petrified that I was gonna fall down the stairs. So we decided it was better, safer, better all round really, just to downsize and move to a bungalow. And that's where we are now. We're still in Essex, but we're in a, in a lovely, little bungalow as you've seen um, we've spent a lot of time and money on this doing this up as well um, to get it to how we want it but I think it's finally I mean the, the only thing we haven't done up is the kitchen but I've done bits in there like the floor and the tiles and everything anyway I'm digressing so <laughs> that's um, where we are at now my job now is a youtuber as you know and I love it I love it and also to be at home to be able to do washing when I can do washing to do a bit of housework when I can do housework and to still go out um, weekly with my mum and dad um, I love I love that so I have to look at the good good positive sides of my life you know anyway I'm going to now go back to when I first got diagnosed so before I got diagnosed the first time I, I got ill with the fibromyalgia and ME was when it was 2016 so we went we were very lucky to go on holiday with the girls to America Florida America to Disney World is it Disney World or Disneyland there I think it's Disney World and Universal and all that. I've, I have been very fortunate to have been there four times now because we went on our honeymoon. I went when I was younger with my mum and sister, and then I've been twice with Mark. Well, three times with Mark because we went on a honeymoon, but twice with Mark and the girls as well. So we've been very, very lucky to do that, and it's one of my favourite places in the world. If anyone says, "What would you do if you won the lottery?" I would buy a house in Florida and I would spend probably winters there, summers here and live my best life. 
<laughs> I absolutely love it. I do. I love it. Anyway, some people think it's just commercialised and horrible. I love it. So we went to Florida in 2016. It was sort of Easter time and had a lovely time. We've got a friend over there called TJ, who you might have seen in the previous vlogs. You could go back and see TJ's visit because he worked at Universal, so he took us all on the rides and everything. Anyway, had a wonderful holiday, but a few times I was feeling a bit poorly and I have suffered with IBS since I was six years old. I had to have like, um, I think they were called Regulan sachets then, which is a bit like fibre gel now because um, otherwise I couldn't go to the loo and I had that like I say since I was six so I knew it was something to do with my stomach um, it was sort of ongoing throughout the holiday but sometimes it was worse than others and I just thought oh well maybe it's something I've eaten you know your diet's not always good when you're on holiday is it anyway we came home and Holly actually had bought me for Mother's Day um, tickets to go and see the play that goes wrong in London and we went there and I wasn't feeling well at all um, but I was determined to go because she'd bought me these lovely tickets and we, we I did enjoy it obviously I enjoyed the play was brilliant spending time with Holly is always lovely but I didn't feel very good at all and I think it was probably the next day when Mark was downstairs it was like four or five in the morning he was ready to go to work and I had to message him and say look I'm in so much pain with my stomach and back I don't know what to do with myself and he came up and I was sobbing and I was rolling around the bed he phoned 111 they called an ambulance um, and the ambulance did lots of tests and they wanted obviously to get me checked out in hospital so, cut a long story short, I was in hospital for a week and the stress of that, they didn't know what was wrong with me. So if you had seen my previous recent vlog where I'd been in hospital with um, an infection in my abdomen, it was the same thing. So I had a fluid around my small bowel but they couldn't understand and then they thought it was appendicitis and it wasn't and so I kept having kneel by mouth up we're going to operate no we're not going to operate I think I saw in a week I must have seen about 15 different consultants come and go um, I had antibiotics pumping into me through um, the cannula and that ruptured my veins about three times um, it was just the whole thing was horrific okay i kept seeing like people come in for surgery go for go home and come in and i was still there and i just couldn't see a way out of it but eventually they sent me home and i had lots of awful awful tests um to do with the stomach and the consultant eventually saw me and just said oh it's just severe IBS you're just gonna have to go on the FODMAP diet the low FODMAP diet which I did which did help but anyway it's the stress of that week that sent me into fibromyalgia and ME it's the trauma of that week um, I do have a lot of past traumas too that I have worked through with counsellors and I do believe that the brain is a very complex and wonderful thing but your body can only take so much and I think that week that I was in hospital just tipped me over the edge and my body was like no no we can't cope with this anymore this is the last straw so yeah then it just went on from there I tried to go back to work I worked in a primary school I was um, a TA to a little boy with autism and generally in the classroom I was there for was it six years or more maybe more I loved my job I was passionate about my job I ran a gym trail um, group for all the children with SEN in the school I was trying to get into the SEN department like a job in there I was living my best life I loved 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 my job and I loved the children and I was so sad 
uh, when I had to leave. They did, I mean, they were trying to help me. The headmistress was brilliant. She tried to help me um, when I was struggling with my mobility and my back and my stomach. They got me like a big swivel chair to save me having to sit on the little chairs. Uh, they, they said that I could have a break when I want. That they were really, really good. But unfortunately, it was just too much. And I had to go, in the end, I think the family dragged me into the doctors and said, this is enough, it's enough, Nick, you've got to sort this out. And I was sent to a rheumatologist. So I went on long-term sick from school, from work. And the rheumatologist had me in tears. By this time I was in a wheelchair. And he said, what are you in that for? Get out. He, he was awful. And we suggested, he did all the tests on me, we suggested to him fibromyalgia and he was like, oh no, 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 you have to have fibromyalgia for years, like pain for years to be diagnosed with fibromyalgia. And I said, right, okay. And then when Mark and I looked it up, three months, you only have to have chronic pain for three months or more to be diagnosed with fibromyalgia. So he was talking out of his arse. Anyway. So, the rheumatologist wasn't very helpful. He said, I'm gonna send you to the pain clinic. So I said, I was sent to the pain clinic and she said, well, of course you've got fibromyalgia, right? Okay. Oh, and before this, I missed a bit. I was sent to the ME clinic first because the doctor thought because of my fatigue, it could be ME. So I went to the ME clinic, had to fill out all these forms and it turned out that they said, I've got the fatigue of ME, but I've got the pain of fibromyalgia, and the two are connected by the same thread. Um, so yeah, ME is like the severe fatigue, and the pain is the fibromyalgia. So she wanted me to go to the pain clinic, so that's where I went. And they're like, yes, you've got fibromyalgia and ME, blah, 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 blah. This is what I was on, I was on gabapentin, and then that didn't work. I ended up putting on three stone in weight because of it. Um, then I went on pregabalin. I was I was on so many different, all the tablets that you've probably tried if you're listening to this and you've got fibromyalgia. They give you the same stuff, don't they? <laughs> anyway, they said they were gonna send me on a pain relief course. Is it pain relief? No, pain clinic course. I think that's what it was. Um, so you had to go, this is ridiculous, okay? <laughs> this is why I think this pain course is ridiculous. It's a week course. Okay, so I can't work, yet you're expecting me to turn up every day for a week. They wanted you there, whether you were having a flare up or not. I suffered flare ups while I was there. I was in tears, sobbing. I couldn't sit on their chairs because they were rock hard. So I ended up taking in a garden chair and sitting on that. I had to lug all that with me every day. I had to drive there and it was about half an hour away and I can't drive for very long because of my fatigue and my pain. And then it was like from nine till four every day. It's so ridiculous, it's laughable. They made you go on a walk every day uh, with them. It was like boot camp, right? Now, other people might have had different experiences. A lot of people were saying how much they'd gained from it. But as you can see from these vlogs, I am not one to sit and do nothing. So I had researched everything possible that I could about fibromyalgia and ME, and therefore had already taken steps to help myself. I went to seated yoga once a week. I took all the right herbal tablets that you're supposed to take. I did the pacing, I did this, I did that, the other. Anyway, by the end of this course, I think something's just come through my letterbox, um, I felt a little bit wiser about, it's, it's just different things I learned, but a lot of it I already knew. And a lot of people that were there with me didn't know the stuff. So that's fair enough, because they hadn't researched it. I had. So it was pretty pointless me being there. But anyway, anyway, what they do after this pain clinic course is discharge you from the pain clinic. So if you don't want to be discharged from pain clinic, 
don't do the course is my advice <laughs> but if you do want to find out more about pain and chronic pain and fatigue then do it I was really cross that I was discharged from pain clinic after that because I thought the idea of the pain clinic was to help you manage your pain in ways other you know not not just medication but anyway whatever so then I was on my own I had um, a GP a new GP because my old one was terrible he was just like oh you're far too young for this and I'm like well you're telling me I don't want it I don't want it you know I'm not asking for it <laughs> so yeah I had a new GP and she is wonderful I've still got her now I love her she's brilliant like when I speak to her she always asks me what I think should happen and she will give me whatever once she gave me Oromorph because I said I want to try it and she went yeah fine tried it and then we decided actually no that that wasn't good <laughs> so yeah it's just trial and error really but this was how I was at um, and that's why I started my YouTube channel because then I left work I decided my the children I worked with needed closure they needed to know that Mrs Lord wasn't coming back because every time I saw them in my, the village I worked in they were like when are you coming back Mrs Lord we miss you we've kept your chair and oh it was, it was devastating it really was um, I, I, I took a long time to mourn the loss of my job and my career because I've always worked with children before working at the school I worked in nurseries I was a creche manager in a hotel I worked my way up and it felt like I'd lost everything so I had to gain it somewhere back somewhere you know which is why I started YouTube because I got so much out of watching the likes of Zoe Sugg um, Alfie Days all of those people on YouTube and it brought me such joy to watch their vlogs I thought I can do this I can vlog my life I can help other people that have the same thing as me I can share all my knowledge with everybody that has this and see if I can help others so that they don't have to sit through a week of pain clinic course um, so yeah that's that's why I started my channel that's why how I got diagnosed that's where I am today do I miss not working with children desperately um, I have nightmares about it constantly but I have to look at the positives and that's what I do in everyday life I look at the positives today I'm on a flare-up I've put makeup on to make me me feel better and also so that you don't get a shock because I tell you actually I'll show you I took a photo that I'm gonna put on my Instagram in a minute of um, me this is my new phone by the way before makeup today and after makeup All right let's see if you can see that uh, it's very mirrory with the garden sorry hang on let's see if I can show you so that's can you see that at all before and after yeah it's just to show you that's that one before is how I feel today but put a bit of makeup on do your hair I had a shower don't know how and now I'm gonna collapse on the sofa and watch YouTube and it just it's gonna make me feel every time I go past a mirror I don't look at myself and think oh my god you look awful you know I look past and I think well done Nick for getting up and being present because that's so important anyway I hope you've enjoyed me rambling on about my story I hope it's given you a bit more of an insight into our lives um, if there's many many videos in the in the fibro sections I'll link the fibro sections in the description and just go through them and see if there's any you want me to make then let me know because I'm all too happy to research and there's a couple that people have asked for that I'm going to look into um, but I have to also be aware that this channel isn't just for people with fibromyalgia it's also 
an entertainment channel so a shop with me and a this and a that and the other so I have to balance the fibro with the the entertainment if you see my my drift if you get my drift if you get my drift <laughs> anyway hope you've enjoyed it give it a thumbs up leave me a nice comment in the description um, let me know if things sound a bit similar to you or if you've tried that horrible <laughs> pain clinic course and I will see you all on Saturday for the weekly. Take care. Bye.